Hello everybody, this is GamePro24X, back again with another Metal Gear Survive guide, and this time we're going to be covering base digs. Now this is a video that a lot of people have been requesting, especially a lot of you new guys that probably don't know how the whole system works. So, what we're going to cover today in this video is how base digs work, how to be successful in each wave, what rewards you can get from doing base digs and how useful they are, and how to optimize your base camp. So let's start at the beginning. Base digs are available to you after you complete the entire story, you've done every single mission, and there is nothing left to do. You will be given a tutorial dig where it's all done in one day, and you have to defend the base yourself. Not too difficult, but you will have to actually do that yourself. However, the, the next base dig plans you do decide to select, you can either do it yourself, or you can let your base defense team while you are out so they will handle everything and it's all practically a numbers game at that point now there are a total of six base dig plans to choose from if you go to the online information on the game it will tell you exactly what base digs drop certain blueprints and whatnot so take a look at that as it is updated and useful for those who are wondering where to get certain things and this information is also included in the spreadsheet now, one little note that you should be aware of, during the campaign of Metal Gear Survive, you will have an opportunity to get base capacity level 2, and after you complete base dig 4, you will unlock base capacity level 3. Base capacity 2 actually increases how much stuff you can actually add to your base, while base capacity level 3 only just adds the spaces outside of the catwalk, so you can just place stuff out there if you ever choose to. But... Don't get confused, it does not actually give you additional space like level 2 does. There are a total of 6 different base dig plans you can choose from. They all have their own difficulty spikes. And depending on your base defense numbers, it could drastically alter the outcome of your auto base digs. So you can end up losing stuff or you can end up not losing stuff. Now the ultimate key to winning in base defense is make sure that you have five times the amount of number on whatever side the enemy is attacking on and you will practically not lose any items or you will probably lose maybe one or two items. So always keep that little rule of thumb in check. When you start your base dig plan, the first initial wave will start immediately whether you choose to defend it yourself or you let your team defend it via the auto base dig. After that, it will take 22 hours until you can do the next wave. You can also choose to pay with SV coins to skip that, but in all honesty, I would say don't bother. So for example, base dig 2 takes 2 waves to complete. So when you start it, you will immediately do the first wave right then and there. Then you will have to wait 22 hours. So when you come back 22 hours later, or essentially 24 hours later, which what most people do, you complete it, and there you go, you're done. So... In hindsight, base dig 2 only takes one day to complete. And of course, the higher tier plans you complete, the more rewards you earn. Alright, now that I established the ground rules of how everything works, and at least the basic rules of thumb, let's go over the rewards that you earn from completing certain base digs. So every time you complete a base dig, you will earn an X amount of Kuban, an X amount of manuals, an X amount of weapon and gear enhancement kits, which are used to create your own enhancement kits via the conversion table. So if you complete base digs 1 and 2, you will earn 2 manuals, 1 million Kuban, 100 weapon and gear enhancement kits each. Those are two separate items that you earn 100 of each, and it only takes one whole day to complete. If you complete base digs 3 and 4, you will earn 4 manuals, 2 million Kuban, and 200 weapon and gear enhancement kits each, and it will take you 2 days to complete. Now technically, according to base dig 4 and such, there's actually no real reason to do it at this moment in time because all you'd have to do is just complete base dig 2 twice and you will earn the same amount of rewards as if you completed a base dig 4. However, there are other factors involved where you would want to do base dig 4 and we will cover that a lot later in the video. So let's continue. So this is where things start to diverge and this is where you would want to focus on base digs 5 or 6. So, if you complete base dig 5, you will earn 7 manuals, 3 million Kuban, 300 weapon and gear enhancement kits each, and it will take you 3 days to complete this. Now, if you did 3 base dig 2s in the same amount of time, you will actually earn less manuals than if you were to do 
one base dig five. You will only earn a total of six manuals. Other than that, everything else is exactly the same. If you did base dig two three times, you will earn the same amount of Kuban, the same amount of weapon and gear enhancement kits. The only thing that does give you a little bit more is the field manuals. And the field manuals are what you give your staff so that they, be, they can become A and then S ranks on your team, thus improving your stats for the entire base on whatever you want to focus on. So the manuals are practically the end game for your base. That way you can have S ranks and you can build certain things that you normally couldn't at like A rank and such. Now finally, if you complete base dig 6, you will earn 8 manuals, 3 million Kuban, 300 weapon and gear enhancement kits. And it will take you 3 days as well. So once again, if you were to replicate this with base dig 2, you will actually lose out on 2 extra manuals compared to just doing 1 base dig 6. Now in this guide, I'm going to show you how you can complete up to base dig 5 lossless. But with base dig 6 though, it's actually a lot trickier. I'm not really sure why base dig 6 is so drastically different. But even though I actually am like 6 times stronger on each side of my base, I still lose a lot of stuff every time I complete base dig 6. It makes no sense. So currently I'm still in the process of making a lossless base dig 6, but I'm very, very close to actually completing that. However, due to the upcoming event, I feel it very necessary to actually put out this video today. That way people fully understand and how they can actually do this themselves. Because this will definitely benefit you for this next event coming up tomorrow. So the real benefit to doing base digs is that if you decide to not really play survive, if you at least complete base dig 2, or base dig 4 or whatever. If you, So long as you're completing your base digs practically every day, you will have a large stockpile of Kuban, field manuals, and other stuff by the time you do come back and want to play again. And this came in really handy when I have two extra characters and I was having them do base digs as well. And when I finally decided to play with them and level them up, I had a really huge stockpile to finally get a good jump on. And yes, if you have multiple avatars and you do base digs on each and every one of them, you can earn double, triple to quadruple field manuals and enhancement kits every single day because those things are shared between all of your avatars. The only thing that is not shared is Kuban. But at the very least, they are all still earning Kuban passively every single day, so long as you're on top of the base digs. That is why I urge anyone who ever saves up a thousand coins, definitely get yourself another playable character because they will definitely help you out in terms of earning more field manuals and enhancement kits, which in turn, you can make those into actual enhancement kits that can level up your weapons and your gear and other stuff. So all of that is shared and all of that is greatly beneficial to you. Now, the only reason you do not want to do Base Dig 2 exclusively is during the Researcher Story event, which, by the way, that's going to be coming up tomorrow. And every time you do Base Digs, that is how you earn BP during this event. And by strictly sticking to base dig 2, you will earn a lot less battle points than if you were to do base dig 4. Even though you're still doing both of them at the same amount of time, you will be earning more battle points by doing base dig 4 because base dig 4 gives you additional battle points on top of what you're currently earning. But I would say for the event, for, ev for anyone and everyone, just go for base dig 5. And coming up next, we are going to talk about how we can actually do base dig 5 and succeed every single time. So let me give you a really quick example of what my current base looks like. So for the longest time, you would have one long row of shock traps. And you would also need another row behind it of automated turrets. However, my new method uh, easily outdoes the old method and it's a lot easier to maintain and do. The old method that people were more accustomed to, they didn't have the fences that I have placed here. And I will go into very deep detail as to why I have things set up the way they are. But as an example, I'm going to go ahead and complete this base dig 5 and you'll see how much I will need to repair every single time. Hurry back! Without you here, we've got less fighting power!
So if you go to your basic history, you can actually check to see what happened to see if you actually lost anything. So on this wave that just passed, I didn't lose anything at all. You would see little red numbers there. So that's good. That means I don't have to actually replace anything. And what's even better, all I need to do is just hit repair all. I just need to repair with a few iron and a few pieces of wood. And that's it. It's good to go for the next wave. And yes, this is very easily doable for anyone that I believe can actually work for those of you who even have a C rank in base defense. Uh, maybe you might lose some things here and there, but I'll definitely um, explain to you some other ways to kind of mitigate that. But so long as you have every single positive base defense guy on your base defense team, uh, five of them, you will have at least a B rank, and that is more than enough to actually complete basic five, no problem, without losing anything. So I made this handy dandy chart that represents our base, or at least the parts of the base that we are going to be focusing on. Now I know it's probably going to be a little hard to read the lettering because of the color choices that I made for this chart, but hopefully you guys can read most of it, and I will definitely just read it out loud for you. So, every square represents a placeable area that you can place down a trap or whatever. The blue squares represent the areas that I place down my turrets and shock traps and whatnot for that inner area of the base to have it fully fortified. The red squares represent the catwalk and you cannot place anything on top of it or below it. So when you see that red square there, those are areas that the catwalk currently block. That way you have a better idea of where all this stuff is supposed to be and where it's supposed to go. So that red that big old red that's surrounding the entire thing, that is the catwalk. The yellow lines that are in front and behind the catwalk are the iron fences that I have surrounding the entire base. So, like I mentioned before, you cannot put anything underneath or on top of the catwalk, but fences can actually fit right up against it on the side. And the last thing is the green line. The green line represents the divide because there are four different zones on your base, and this is going to accurately represent how it's going to look like if you were looking at your base from the top down with the current emplacements there. So for the rest of this presentation, let's go ahead and just move this to the side. That way I have a little extra room so I can actually type and show you guys stuff on the screen. Now initially, the original strategy made by Skillzerk that a lot of people still use even today, which I'm pretty sure is going to change after this video, um, is that the most inner ring where all the blue is, used to be auto turrets, the automated AI controlled machine gun turrets. And then the other blue squares right in front of that was just shock traps. And then that was it. There was no fences, no nothing. You just had those two. There are three really big problems with this original setup. One, every single wave that you would complete, you would have damaged shock traps and damaged turrets and whatnot. And for the most part, you would have to like, kind of ignore a few of them and repair the ones that really needed to be repaired or else you were going to lose them and of course doing that cherry picking that actually takes up a lot of time and obviously you want to just do the auto dig repair things as fast as possible and be done with it the second issue was that it was actually much cheaper if you manually destroyed the shock trap and such and you rebuilt another one because you get back some of the materials by doing that so when you have to do that over and over again with like 12, maybe 20 of them all around your entire camp, that's going to be a little tedious, especially when you have multiple characters like I do. And the third issue, the auto machine gun turrets take up a lot of space. Now, they used to be a lot worse. They actually used to take up 1.7% base capacity uh, per turret. That was terrible. That was god awful. So thank God Konami actually fixed that and reduced them down to 0 0.4. But even at 0.4, they still take up a good amount of space. And I'll actually prove that to you guys. Now, for my strategy, you're going to have to put down a turret at every single blue square. So there is a total of 140 blue squares available. So every single turret is going to take up 0.4% times that by 140. That's 56% base capacity used up. Now, the reason why you want to do that is because these turrets give you 3,600 defense points on each side. So you're going to have a very, very bulky defense team on every single side of your base for now on thing is though is that everybody including myself was under the assumption that when you do auto base digs you have to have auto turrets so that they can defend your base we were wrong <laughs> so 
I played around a bit and it turns out you don't have to use these. So there is an actual alternative that gives you the same amount of defense points, but not only does it take different materials, which you could argue is a, a that could be a little harder or maybe a little easier to obtain over the AI control turrets, but it takes up 0.2% base capacity instead. And that replacement is the heavy machine gun turret type D. This is the mounted manual controlled turret. Turns out that when you do auto base digs, it doesn't matter what you have placed down. The only thing that matters is what your numbers are. So you could have a lot of you can have a bunch of junk that's technically not going to do anything. You could have a bunch of spiked poles. So long as you have five times the amount of the number uh, required to beat the opposition, you're good. Now, hopefully you guys can read that. But with the heavy machine gun type D, you actually get the same amount of defense points, which is 3600. That's assuming if you have an S rank in base defense. Now, again, you don't have to have an S rank, but so long as you have a B, you'll have high numbers. And this will increase automatically when you level up your base defense. So don't worry about having to replace them all. So each heavy machine gun is going to take one firing unit, 12 steel, 6 gears, 6 springs, 12 gunpowder, and 6 screws, which total that out times by 140 will cost you 140 firing units, 1680 steel, 840 gears, 840 springs, 1680 gunpowder, and 840 screws. Now I know that sounds like a lot, but this is a one-time investment. With this setup, you will not lose any turrets, and you probably won't even have to re, uh, repair them either. So this is a one-time uh, purchase, and you have a really, really huge base defense boost on each side. So if each turret gives you 3,600, we're going to times that by 140 as well. And we will earn 230,400 defense points total. And again, this is assuming if you have an S rank for your base defense. And I know you might be thinking 230,000 is a shit ton because the number the absolute highest number that you'll ever be able to face is about 190. So this is way over the top. But despite that, I still lose stuff on base dig 6. Now I do want to add a quick little note. Do you see where the green line actually splits in between four blue squares? Well, that's what actually happens when you set up this base. When that happens, it actually splits the power or defense points of whatever you place there. So this turret is halved, but one half goes on one side and one half goes on the other side. So I just want to make that quick little note. That way people don't really uh, freak out over that. Now the final cherry on top of using these machine gun turrets is that you will use up a total of 28% base capacity. Way fuck, uh, about half. You effectively cut in half what you would have had if you use the auto turrets and it gives you the same amount of defense points and it still functions the same you won't lose anything you will just use different materials to build it but you will get a lot more base capacity which will come in very very handy for the rest of you that want to build more stuff and reorganize things and whatnot so that right there is a little tip that not a whole lot of people knew so i'm glad i was able to finally tell you guys that and you guys can finally enjoy that and of course the last part of this entire strategy is the normal fences so for the normal iron fence if you're at rank s on your base defense team every fence will give you 72 defense points so you will need 72 fences inside the catwalk and you'll need 88 fences surrounding the outside of the catwalk giving you 160 fences total and each fence costs six iron each so six times 160 that's 960 iron so if we times 160 by 72, we will have an additional 11,520 defense points overall. Uh, of course, you can time, uh, split that by 4. That way you'll have an accurate number to put on each side. And of course, since every fence takes up 0.2% base capacity, times that by 160, you will take up 32%. So with the previous mounted turrets taking up 38% plus 32 you will have a grand total of 50% of your base defense or your base capacity totally dedicated to base defense. And the other 50% is dedicated for all of your necessities, which is way more than you actually really need. So that is good. So with this setup, you can easily do basic 5, no problem. 
you may or may not lose one fence here and there. But if you do lose a fence, I know a really neat trick that actually works and it will actually prevent that fence from being lost the next time you do base dig 5. So believe it or not, I actually did find a purpose for the shrubs. So let's say you did base dig 5 and on wave 2 you lost like 2 fences here and there. All you need to do is just grab a tree or a palm tree or a cactus, whatever. Just grab any of those, put it right in front where you lost the fence, replace the fence, and the next time you did that wave again, this tree will be beat up and the fence will be beat up, but you won't lose a single thing. So now when you hit repair or repair all, you will just need to repair the iron and you'll need to repair the wood needed for the trees. So yes, we <laughs> have an actual use for these stupid things. So I'm not joking when I say you can consider these items the official flex seal of this game. And at this moment in time, with my base dig 6, I have a shit ton of trees all around my base, and they are doing its job. They are preventing certain fences and certain emplacements from being destroyed, while also taking a large portion of the hits, and ensuring that I don't lose any more. So, heavily utilize that, but like I said, with this setup, and even at a B rank, you may lose maybe one or two fences. So, that's going to be one or two trees. And there, you're done. So with this setup, you will be able to complete base dig 5 every single wave with very minimal effort. And on top of that, the repairs are very, very small. It would take you like less than like maybe 70 iron per repair and like a very few pieces of wood if you have some flex seal trees. So literally all I have to do is every day when I log in, I'll come in, grab all the materials from my animals, then go to the base dig, continue the base dig, go to my... Uh, construction unit repair all and log out i'm done i don't need to do anything else and that can be done super duper quick here's a quick little bonus tip for you all if you go and collect all the materials from your animals and you go and harvest all of your plants and vegetables when you continue the next wave of your base defense when you come back all of the materials like the leather and the specific animal parts and even the medical plants, those will automatically be deposited into your storage. So you don't have to actually manually move them yourself. However, you will need to manually move all the raw meat and the raw vegetables that you do collect. But aside from that, like half of your job is already done by, you know, storing away all of the materials you earn from harvesting your animals and such. So I thought that's a neat little trick. I do that every time I do a base dig, go and collect all my animals and all my plants and stuff, do the dig, everything is mostly depositive, and I just put back all the meat and such that I got, and that's it. Now, for the final segment of the video, I'm pretty sure a lot of you may be wondering, well, GamePro, with this great setup, that's nice and all, but can I even fit all of my animals, all my farms and whatnot properly? And the answer is yes. Yes, you can. It's all about of organization. Now... I could have shown you guys my original save file, but because it's a huge fucking mess at the moment, I'm going to show you the other two files that, are, that I'm exclusively only doing base dig 5s with. So this is what you're going to realistically going to be looking at when you are building this base. So here is a quick overview of what my current base looks like with this same exact setup. Now I know I don't have the turrets set up, it's just the regular shock traps, but you, th this still works. This still works for base dig 5 so long as you have the mounted turrets on one whole row. Then you have the shock traps and then you have fences. Now I'm going to show you a quick little tour of what I have to do every single day when I do my base digs. So because all of my animals, all the cages are lined up, all I need to do is hold square and hold forward. And there we go. I collect everything. Same thing with water. I get empty water bottles and then empty canteens and I fill up the canteens with the clean water and I fill up the dirty bottles with uh, the dirty water. So there's all my plants and then this side carries all my food. Now not every single f veggie plant is here but depending on what your food supply team rank is you don't need all of them at once. So this is how it's gonna look like with this setup. Now on my other account my third account this is how it looks like on there. So again, you have the same theme where all the animals and all the water are nicely packed together along with everything else around it. So as you can see here with this one, the plant form is actually a lot more organized. It's, it's a lot more together. Oh, and the reason why I have the exploration tent right next to the console is because it's a really quick way to like clear out and, you know, get rid of old staff that I don't need. And it's just a little trick that I'll have to demonstrate in another video. But as you can see here, all my animals are grouped up together. 
And obviously these horses back here would be where that tent is, but again, due to that trick, I have to make some compromises. But I also put a whole row of the dirty water containers behind all the animal cages, so everything is nice and compact. And here is all my plant farms. So there you go. That is what you're going to be realistically looking at when you start creating this base. And I know it may sound a little tedious and a little, uh, like strenuous at some times but trust me when you kind of get into this mode when you create your next avatar or your third avatar and whatnot you'll already have that mindset and you will already begin to start planning out where you want certain things and you'll just it'll just come naturally one more little thing i do want to mention that always put the animals on the side where you can access your storage because there are going to be times you're going to be almost full from collecting animal parts and you want to get to a storage unit and put away possessions that you don't need or put away meat that way you can free up some space to go collect the rest of your stuff so that's a common theme with my uh, setups so that is it for base digs and i think i've covered everything that you guys need to know so i'm glad i was able to make this video because i've had this information for a long time but since the next event is coming up that is dealing with base digs, now is the absolute perfect time to put it out there. That way, you guys are armed with the knowledge of how to do this with very little compromise and very little losses and ease of repair. So if you enjoy the content and all the effort that I put into the game for the community, definitely consider being a Patreon. And if you want to just follow me and find out what I'm doing, I'm always chatting around in my Discord. It's always very active and it is friendly to survive players. I will be streaming later on in the week, so hopefully I'll catch you guys there. So I know it was a long video, but it had a lot of information I had to cover, a lot of the ground rules, and a lot of rules of thumb that a lot of people probably don't know. So, sorry if it was a little long, but hopefully you guys learned a lot of things, and you can now be more successful with base digs. So, good luck to all of you with this next event. I will have a video tomorrow covering what is in the event and all this other good stuff. So yeah, this is GamePro24X, and I will see you guys next time. Mission complete, and how? They're going to tell stories about this one, boss.